Speaker. I call John Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to make a brief intervention uh, on this bill, as probably I'm the only person in this House that's actually had a close working relationship with the security intelligence over a long period of time. But not as long as my friend Keith Locke, who's been on their books since age 11, and he's much older than me. Never mind. Um, at least he's polite, unlike his uh, rude colleague in the front seat. Mr. Speaker, I've got to say to you that in my experience, the members who, uh, the 200 odd people that have made up the Security Intelligence Service at any one time over the last seven or eight years, the uh, last 25 or 30 years, are actually a great bunch of people. And they've been really well led by people like Don McIver, like Richard Woods more recently, and uh, a constituent of mine at the moment, Warren Tucker. It's worth recalling when we think about this legislation that in fact, up until 1956 in this country, the police did the work of the, of the Security Intelligence Service. And then between 1956 and 1969, the Security Intelligence Service operated without any legislative, without any legislative base whatever. Mr Speaker, since 1969 we've had legislation, it's been reviewed on a few occasions, and because technological change has outstripped the old law, that's why we're in the process of revamping the legislation again. I'd just like to say to people like Keith Locke and to other colleagues in this House that the, the bread and butter of the security intelligence is actually is in vetting public servants. And that's quite important, as we remember Defence's chief scientist a couple of years ago who unfortunately slipped through the cracks. And why do we do that? Because we want to have a system that we know is operating with integrity, that people can, um, can have a certain amount of trust placed in them. I think that uh, most of the people that are, uh, that are checked in this way include defence, foreign affairs, senior public servants. They, the Security Intelligence Service runs three offices, Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch, and their job is primarily, aside of the main bread and butter, is collecting intelligence, working out threats to our community and making sure that those threats are disrupted. Because like when we're having the Rugby World Cup, we do not want... Uh, an event of uh, some causing us some concern or damage during uh, that occasion. One other point I'd like to make is that the Minister in charge of the Security Intelligence Service cannot name somebody or cannot direct the service to uh, follow a particular person of, uh, that in Minister in charge is choosing. So I think that I think that the system has a great deal of integrity. We have the, in the Inspector General and, and I think that, uh, in my experience, over a long period of time, we can be very comfortable with the work that they do, we can be very proud of the work that they do, and we can see that they run a system with impartiality, um, with integrity, and with a great deal of thoroughness. Thank you, Mr Speaker. <coughs> Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. 